Hello interwebs, I hope you're all doing well. Apologies for my uh, scratchy voice. I've had a uh, really bad cold these past few days, thankfully not COVID. Uh, but it's also why uh, I'm a little late in getting to this video that I wanted to do uh, last week because there's been a little bit of a little bit of a controversy going on within the Star Trek community, uh, more so than usual, and not just about whether or not you know Star Trek Discovery is good or anything like that, but actually about something to do related to the SAG after strikes and one actor in particular's behavior uh, surrounding possibly uh, scabbing, and that is around Star Trek Voyager actor and Star Trek Prodigy actor Rob. Robert Beltran, who many Trekkies know from his performance as the character of Chakotay on both of those shows. And I wanted to discuss this situation in greater detail because I think it's going to create an interesting conversation uh, not only about uh, how actors are supposed to conduct themselves during the strike and what it means to scab, but also kind of run parallel to a much longer conversation that has been going around uh, the character of Dakota for a much longer time since he was really introduced, and that is about representation uh, of indigenous characters and what to do with characters uh, going forward in modern day projects from franchises that are really, really long and have had problematic elements in them. So let's get into the weeds of what's been going on. Uh, recently, the last weekend, there was a fairly well-known Star Trek convention that happens ye every year called Star Trek Las Vegas. And I actually attended this convention. Uh, it was my first time attending it. It was a ton of fun. Uh, I had a really, really good time. But one of the interesting things about the con this year was because the SAG After Strikes are ongoing right now, all of the live action actors who were there at the con were unable to talk about Star Trek because Star Trek as a property is from a struck company so all the actors were not allowed to promote their work um, both past or present and so couldn't actually talk about Star Trek there was a little bit of a uh, gray area when it came to animated folks Lower Decks and Prodigy could talk a little bit about it because animation isn't covered uh, under the AMTPT and so there was a little bit of a gray area there but regardless, it actually made for a really fun atmosphere at the con uh, that I really enjoyed because it meant that a lot of the actors didn't get a lot of the like Star Trek minutia questions like, what were you doing in episode 10 of da 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 da? And actually had to ask them about their like, their job, their lives, their interests. And I thought that that was a very personal con. I really kind of enjoyed it. But it meant also that, you know, the actors had to be very careful to, you know, if they were on stage at a panel especially, to not talk uh, about Star Trek or else, you know, maybe run afoul of, uh, you know, sag after. And, you know, of course, people understand here and there. No one's going to be jumping down these people's throats. If they accidentally say Star Trek and, you know, react to something, we're all human. Uh, and I feel like the unions probably understand that to a degree. And also the actors were there because they need to pay their bills. You know, they get paid to attend these cons. And also they, they should deserve to be able to go and interact with fans, um, stands you know, promoting work. However, during a Star Trek Voyager panel, which I did not attend, but actually one of my friends who I was with did attend um, and did corroborate this story very heavily, the actor Robert Beltran uh, started talking about Star Trek without any, you know, hesitancy. And apparently the moderator tried to get him to stop a few times. You know, I think um, uh, Garrett Wong, who plays Harry Kim on Star Trek Voyager, was also on the panel and was also being like, maybe not. And he just kept going. He kept talking about Star Trek, kept saying things, and seemed to be... Uh, uh, uncaring about the fact that the SAG after strikes were ongoing. Now, Robert Beltran is certainly not the only actor to uh, get criticism for something like this. Similarly, the uh, lead actor of the TV show Arrow, who for some reason's name I thought would come to me as I'm talking here, but for some reason I, I legitimately cannot uh, remember his name, so I'll put it up on the screen here. Also recently got in trouble for saying, you know, he didn't really support the strikes, uh, maybe potentially promoting his work, or at least inventing frustration that he couldn't promote his work during the strike. I uh, la later, like, recanted a little bit of those statements, um, but overall he sort of standed by them and got him a lot of flack, because right now is uh, a time when actors need to show solidarity, fighting the system that is, you know, not not helping the working class actors and trying to, you know, shove all of them into just, you know, taking their likenesses, not paying them enough, and numerous other things uh, that, you know, the SAG-AFTRA union is asking for in their reasonable demands against the company. That these systems need the, these people's labor in order to function. Um, and so it's a really important time at the moment. But Rob Beltran apparently didn't seem to care. And uh, Robert Beltran has also sort of been very criticized online for some, let's just say, not great take such as alluding to being anti-masked during the currently ongoing COVID-19 pandemic during the height of it in 2020, as well as calling neurotypical and ableist offensive words. 
And he doubled down on this after, uh, you know, people called him out online for breaking the strike guidelines, where someone said, you know, oh, all the people are criticizing you, they're just people with, you know, rainbow flags, trans flags, and pronouns in their bio. Um, you know, real Star Trek fans like you. And then Robert Belson replied to this, you know, saying real Star Trek fans are very nice. Um, which some people took, and I think I certainly can understand it looking that way, to Robert Belson saying, you know, trans people, queer people, they aren't really Star Trek fans. We're not included in that. Um, which, especially right now at a time where queer people are also under attack, is, um... Pretty fucking gross. Um, I will get, considering I have also been the under the, uh, you know, I've been attacked by, you know, people on Twitter who've taken things and presumed my intention beyond them. I'll give them the grace to say maybe that wasn't his intention, but it ain't a good look, uh, let's just say, and combined with other things that he has said in the past, you know, I, I am not particularly favorable, uh, to Robert Beltran's politics. And on top of the fact that he does not seem to give a crap about, you know, labor fighting for their rights, you know, I, I'm kind of on the level of like, eh, Rob Beltran is kind of an asshat. And so this is called a, a big controversy in the Star Trek community because, again, there's some people who are like, ah, screw the actors, they're, you know, they're getting uppity, they, 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 they get paid too much without understanding that there's a lot of working class actors who, you know, don't get paid a lot of money uh, and think it's like the Hollywood elites trying to get, get more cash or whatever uh, and ruining their favorite shows. I have stood by Robert Beltran and, uh, you know, other people who will rightfully wish to stand up for labor uh, are saying, you know, Robert Beltran's being an asshat. But it's also led to a longer conversation considering that Robert Beltran also is uh, scheduled to appear in the upcoming season two of Star Trek Prodigy after having also reappeared in season one of Star Trek Prodigy, which is where there's a little bit of a gray area where you can talk about Prodigy a little bit because it is not covered in the AMTPT. But that being said, he was on a Star Trek Voyager panel, so I, one would say that probably considers promoting struck work. But it does lead to the question of what to do about Robert Beltran in Star Trek Prodigy Season 2. Because number one, you know, if you are promoting Struck Works, you're being a scab during a time when you need to be on a strike. And so there's a part of uh, many people that said, you know, he should be recast uh, because of his role. And then on top of that, the other thing with the character of Dakota that has been an ongoing conversation with him ever since he was introduced on Star Trek Voyager is that he is a bit of a... Um, and again, I am not speaking for other people. This is sort of stuff that's been relegated to me and I've learned because I am not indigenous. But he is a bit of a stereotype of indigenous cultures for numerous reasons. One, he, uh, as a character, the character of Tuote, does not come from any real um, indigenous tribe. You know, kind of a, an amalgamation tribe that was sort of couched in a lot of stereotypes. I mean, a Kuchimoya, anybody. Uh, and then there was also the episode where we learned that indigenous cultures came from aliens, which is also a racist trope that is often used. And then on top of this, um, Robert Belton himself is not from those cultures at all. And then even more so, the uh, indigenous, um, uh, you know, sensitivity uh, reader and consultant that they had for Star Trek Voyager was also, um, even at the time, known to be a, uh, you know, scam artist, just scamming to get money. So a lot of problems with the character of Chicote. Um, and so bringing him back in Prodigy was always sort of a dubious notion. And then adding on top that Robert Beltran is being kind of an asshat, it sort of led people to be like, well, number one, you should recast him. Uh, and number two, uh, you know, maybe you should just eliminate the character altogether. Now that would be difficult considering Prodigy season two is well underway. Um, but it does sort of leave the question is, should you ever use him again uh, in season three onwards, etc. Um, and, you know, where I fall on this part of the debate is is, you know, I earnestly think, you know, his character should never be used again uh, after these, you know, after these episodes are finished. I wish he hadn't really been used at all. I understand because the writers wanting to bring him back considering he's tied into Janeway's story and I'm always here for more Janeway. But that being said, I, I it's one of those like, I get it, but it's probably best not to have used the character. But at a certain point, you know, I love Star Trek Prodigy and I understand where they're trying to go. But I would say don't use him anymore in the future. Uh, as for, you know, re-recording his lines, that's a question that I would leave up to indigenous folks to talk about. I've seen, I've seen question, you know, people saying on both sides of that debate, and that's one that I sort of like, I just want to listen. So if you are indigenous, I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. But what this all leads to, and sort of the final reason that I discuss this topic with all of you, is because I think it just sort of showcases how these uh, issues sort of compound upon each other over time. You know, how, you know, him being an, a problematic indigenous character in Star Trek Voyager still carries through to the modern day, still carries through to these projects that are still ongoing. And also how this ties into our feelings on other things and issues that are coming up because this has only been a, a, a talking point at the moment because Robert Beltran is now being controversial. 
This is a conversation that I think many indigenous folks have been having for many years, but it has only really been brought to the forefront of Star Trek people's minds because now Robert Belchin is being an asshat, when really we should have been talking about this all along and really questioning whether or not, you know, Chakotay is a character that we wish to continue in these sort of mainstays of Star Trek canon. Um, it's not a question that I can answer for anybody. You know, I'm not working for Star Trek, nor am I part of the indigenous community, nor am I, you know, one of the heads of Star Trek, nor am I Robert Belchin. But I think it sort of leads me to this question of like, why are we having this conversation now when we should have had it a long time ago? Um, and also, why is anyone still employing Robert Beltran? Um, I do hope after this point, you know, him being a scab and being an asshat for many different reasons, um, I, it kind of leads me to be like, well, sorry, I would prefer not to see him in the things that I watch that I love. Anyways, thank you for watching this. This has just been a sort of general discussion of this issue. I will say I am linking below some articles about Chakotay from indigenous writers. Uh, if you wish to learn more about that discussion, I think it's it's well behooves anybody to learn, um, as I still need to learn as well. So, uh, and if you are indigenous, please uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're not indigenous, also let me know your thoughts in the um, below as well about scabbing and recasting as well. But I, I certainly want to hear uh, most from indigenous folks. So. Uh, with that said, I'm going to go rest my voice. Love y'all. Take care. Live long and prosper.